Good morning. Welcome to worship. Will you please stand and join us as we sing? One, two, one, two three. disciples into the world to preach, teach, and make disciples of all nations. Make this community into a place of compassion and truth so that we might know of the love that you have for all people. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord.
Welcome to worship. It's great to see all of you. Welcome on this beautiful morning. I'm Pastor Eric. Preaching today is Pastor Kevin. And um, before we go any further, um, we're going to uh, greet each other with a sign of God's promised peace and invite the, all the children to come forward for the children's sermon. Gonna go to the park? Who likes to go to the park and play? Yeah? All right. Good morning. It's good to see you. We're gonna have a beautiful day today. Lots of playing outside, I hope. Hope you have a great time. Um, today, we're, we're starting off our service this morning, uh, talking about our Bible reading for today. And uh, first of all, um, I wanted to ask you guys, did you know that light bulbs could burn out? Did you know that? They actually burn out. They only last so long. And I was going to ask, have you, ever, have you ever had a light bulb burn out? What did you do? Did you put a new one in? What did you do? Somebody help you? Yeah, maybe mom or dad helped you. And, um, uh, well, here's, this is crazy, but in the front of your car, there are big light bulbs, and they're called headlights. And I had one of those burn out yesterday. And I didn't know what to do, because it's gotten to be really complicated to fix those. I, I couldn't even just call my dad and ask him to help me. I went, I went to YouTube, and I watched a video, and I thought I could maybe try it. And so I was driving to go buy a light bulb for my car, and I drove past a place that fixes cars, and they were open. And I decided that I would pull in there and ask them if they could help me, and they did, and I was so thankful because they could help me of something I didn't know how to do. And I was so thankful that I was praying to God, thanking God for those people. I thanked them, and I thanked God. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because today's Bible reading that Pastor Kevin's going to uh, talk about, read for us, and then talk about is um, a letter from the Apostle Paul, and he is giving thanks for some other Christians, some friends of his. And he's, he's thanking them, and he's giving thanks to God for them. And so it's a good reminder for us to thank uh, God, thank the people who help us, thank our parents, thank our friends and our siblings when they help us, but also remember today to thank God for creating all kinds of different people in the world who have all kinds of different gifts 
who help to make our world uh, work and go around and make our lives better. So will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our church friends. Thank you for taking care of us through so many different people. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. And now we will continue our worship with confession and forgiveness. I'd like to invite you to stand for this part of our service. As in the presence of the whole community, we tell the truth. In spite of all we have failed to do and the people we have failed to love, God welcomes us with open arms. Trusting in God's gift of life, we come before our God in honesty and repentance. God we confess that we have sinned despite our best intentions. We have not lived in a way that bears witness to your love for all people. Forgive us through the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Set us free from sin, hatred, division, and everything that does not bring life. Easter people, hear the good news. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven in the name of the risen Savior. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning. You look great today. Welcome again to worship here at Easter. We're so glad that you're here. I'm so incredibly thankful for this church and what you do each day throughout the week, and now we're into a new season. Our reading today comes to us from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the first letter, and this is the very beginning of the letter. Paul writes this, Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and in knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into partnership of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to the month of May. That's right, it's May. <laughs> full of all of the things. Some things are winding down, other things are winding up. We got dance recitals, we got graduations, we got the great awakening of the Minnesota State Bird, the mosquito. We have so many things happening. This might be the most May you've ever experienced this month. But the common thread through this month is that all of those things, from track meets to gatherings, all those things, is that we share them together as a community, whatever community that we're connected to, sometimes by where we live, sometimes by where we choose to go, all of those things. And when all those kids and different things happen, we cheer for them all, not just the one that we showed up for, but we cheer for them all because they all belong to us. We want a strong community, 
And if I was to ask you what that looked like, you would tell me all sorts of things, right? That you want things that are strong and growing, winning sports teams and well-funded schools and winning workplaces and year-over-year -year growth and a big green egg and an SUV and all the things, right? <laughs> right? But that's the community we want. But when that community starts struggling with hard issues or hard choices or hard economic headwinds, well, then we can pull back very easily. We start pulling back. We find it easier to choose silence and disappear rather than voice concern or ask for clarification. It's way easier to pick and choose community rather than to belong. Being a follower of Jesus means communion, community, relationship with Jesus. In our baptisms, we're joined, we're connected, we're in community with Jesus. His life, his death, his resurrection. Everything that he has, he says, is ours. What a powerful promise. So being a follower of Jesus means being part of a community where we're chosen and loved and welcomed and accepted, not for the skills and the cash that we bring to the table, but simply because you exist. Simply because you exist. And when community gets hard, when two opinions are in the room at the same time, when the devil is in the details, it's so easy to lose sight about what we're here to do. We're here to grow in faith and carry on the work of Jesus Christ. But conflict can either be creative or destructive, energizing or limiting. And today we're reading these opening words of Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. And this community that's receiving this letter, they were divided. This community was struggling with how to be together in the same place. Some people were looking for the exits because choosing community in Christ is not just showing up for worship. It's the whole life, everything. It spills out into every part of our life. Paul was an early follower of Jesus who was raised in Judaism. And yet he tried to find a way to welcome those who were not raised that way to find a home inside the Christian church. Gentiles and Romans and Greeks and people of all stripes. Paul had an imagination that they were welcome too, that they could find a spot here too. And so they did because community in Christ is worth it because the good news about Jesus is for everyone. Paul wants to expand our imagination today. That community in Christ is living and breathing and life-giving. Community in Christ is built on forgiveness of sins. And it relies, right? It relies on love to transform hate. Community in Christ does not have an escape hatch when we're feeling challenged by loving our neighbors. There's no way out of that. So as Paul is writing this letter... He was living into the reality that Pastor Eric shared with us a few weeks back at the beginning of the book of Acts. You will receive power, all of you disciples, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. He's expanding our imagination of what the who, what, when, where, and how of what the church can be together in all different manner of places. And that verse really guides the way that the church spread and grew and, and, and grew together. And it makes us think bigger about what's going on. Speaking of imagination, does anybody know who this guy is? Oh, you do. Right? He's having a moment again recently where Mr. Rogers believed in the power of imagination. And one of the things about Mr. Rogers, he got letters, right? People used to write letters and send them to the TV studio. <laughs> Here's one of the letters that Mr. Rogers received. Dear Mr. Rogers, please say when you are feeding your fish, because I worry about them. <laughs> I can't see if you're feeding them, so please say you are feeding them out loud. Katie, age five. And then the dad's note on it was Katie is a child who is blind. She does cry if you do not say that you have fed the fish. Whoa. Part of Mr. Rogers' community was children and adults. 
part of Mr. Rogers' community was learning that there are people of different abilities. That included children who had vision impairments. She can't see the feeding of the fish, but Mr. Rogers recognized that need. And when he heard that, he changed himself to make sure that she felt she was a part of it. And so for every single episode thereafter, guess what Mr. Rogers does? <laughs> yeah. He says, I'm feeding the fish <laughs> out loud, out loud. Friends, being a follower of Jesus means communion, community, relationship with Jesus. And in our baptisms, we're joined, connected in community with Jesus and his life, his death, his resurrection, because as he says, everything that he has is also ours. It belongs to us too. So Fred Rogers just showed us that Jesus becomes the lens through which we see everyday struggles of being humans on earth. And Jesus guides us to make choices, sometimes hard ones, to make sure everyone is here at the church. Why? Because community in Christ is worth it. Because the good news of Jesus, the forgiveness of sins, welcome, working for a life-giving community is worth it. And so Fred Rogers changed his life out of respect and out of love for God. As we open this letter of 1 Corinthians, Paul is introducing himself, giving us the reasons why he should be listened to as this community in Corinth is struggling with all of their ideas and questions that they had, and so he uses every single word in that passage I just read to build a case about why he is trustworthy. And the Corinthian church is part of a larger reality. He's telling them, you're connected to Jesus. They're part of a community in Christ, which means it is bigger than any of the struggles that they're experiencing right this moment. There's something more going on. And at the heart of that passage is just a few simple words, the testimony of Christ. In verse 6, we hear this testimony is strengthened in the church, meaning the fullness of Jesus, his life, his death, his resurrection. That testimony helps our community grow. That promise that is Jesus helps us live together in forgiveness and peace and love. And when people stop seeing each other as made in the image of God, we stop showing up for each other. We drop the angry lines on the social medias, when we share that meme, community in Christ can break down. It can break down. And we have read now some of Paul's letter. We've read a little bit of Mr. Rogers. I want to read one more letter for you this morning. Dear brothers and sisters, I wish I was home today. I got a very mean job. You know that we lost our good captain, and now they think they must put me on guard. And I sit right down on the ground and I write just as fast as I can to let you know how I'm getting along. It has not been good. My hearing has not been good since we left Madison. My health has not been good since I was on that hill, not far from Harper's Ferry. But I keep about and I train all the time that is wanted of me. It seems rather hard to be a soldier. But I have got to be one, after all, I think. But I can tell you one thing. If I ever live to get home, I won't be another one, I can tell you. But I suppose that you are making some cider right now. And if you get a chance to send me anything, send me some cider, put it up in bottles, and some apples in a bottle of painkiller. Your brother John, October 14th, 1862, Harper's Ferry. This letter is from a young soldier during the Civil War here in the United States. We're not reading the mail, not of a well-meaning TV celebrity or a preacher in the Mediterranean, no, but a young man who's serving in a life-and-death situation. He's trying to repair a community that has been torn apart over slavery. There has never been a time in human history, friends, when humanity has gotten more loving and less prone to violence and war. Who among us who has not been tailgated when driving on Pilot Knob Road? And how does that make you feel? I've seen you. <laughs> <laughs> who here has not been the target of a passive-aggressive remark from a family member or a co-worker or a person in a store? Friends, this is not going to change. 
No strength of our will is going to make it all get better. We long for what we imagine a world. We imagine a world where no one has to write another letter like this one. But we know that that's not the case. So community in Christ is using our God-given energy to push back against sin and death. Community in Christ is knowing that we have a testimony of Christ. It sounds like in Jesus' name, you are forgiven. This gives us the courage to realize what the prophet Isaiah is dreaming and trying to expand our imagination. And it looks, sounds a little something like this. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. What a vision that we can be a part of, friends. So as you head into the month of May with all the main things that you're going to need to do, check out this promise from our reading today. Paul, after acknowledging all the complicated things of being in community and all the things that we need to do and all the things he's trying to say about himself, he reminds us of this, this core key promise. Can you say it with me? God is faithful. The God who created you and me, who sent Jesus to walk the way of the cross, who died and rose three days later. The heart of our testimony, that God is faithful. God keeps promises and shows up even when we find community hard. I want to say that again one last time. God, and God keeps promises and shows up even when we find community hard. God shows up and will always do so. Because we're in it together, friends. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me, please? Faithful God, thank you. Thank you that you meet us in the promise. And Lord, as we opened up all these letters today, from your friend Paul, from your friend Fred Rogers, from your friend this young man writing in the midst of the Civil War, Lord, help us find the courage to trust that promise that you are faithful in all things. And in this coming week, wherever community is hard, remind us that you're already there, that you've already showed up, that you're already working for good. And that may that give us the courage to trust you more. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, your generosity continues to spur our partners and our shared ministry across from coast to coast. Thank you. Thank you as worshiping now continues with our offering. When my heart is racing deep inside my chest When I'm underneath when my fear is raging and I can't catch my breath, I will remember you are faithful still. You have carried me through deeper waters. Oh
I invite you to please stand as we present our offering and bow your hearts and minds with me in prayer. Blessed are you, O God. We rejoice in the good news of your risen Son. As you have raised us to new life in him, give us joyful and generous hearts, ready to praise you, serve others, and preach the good news of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Rejoicing that Jesus is risen, let us seek God in prayer. As your Easter people, we thank you for this next breath, for the community in Christ that we share. Help us claim your resurrection promises in the valleys and hard moments of our journey in this church. Shape and bless the newly elected members of our vision board and finance boards, the work of our budget and planning teams, and the next steps of the One Easter campaign, as approved at our annual meeting last weekend. Lord, in your mercy. As your Easter people, bless caregivers of all kinds. Create safe, healing spaces for those with dementia, anxiety, and PTSD, be especially with Harold Munshank, Lynette Lepresto, Barb Maher, Jody Taylor, and any who need your gift of healing. Lord, in your mercy. As your Easter people, we know death is part of the story, but it is not the last word. For all who are grieving, send your tender care, including the family of Dwayne Bjerke, Bob Anderson, Barb Chater, the families of Pastor Bonnie Jensen and Pastor Peter Ide. We join our indigenous siblings in mourning and the search for answers on this missing and murdered Indigenous Women's Day. Lord, in your mercy. As your Easter people, we thank you for those preparing for graduations of all kinds. Bless those moving to new chapters and new learning. Bless the high school seniors of Easter as they celebrate their baccalaureate this evening. May your hand bless and guide them all. Lord, in your mercy. As your Easter people, we speak many languages, but are one in Christ. Bless our sisters and brothers in Christ in Tanzania and Guatemala. Bless Abby Doran, our young adult and global mission volunteer serving in Hungary and the young adults preparing to serve as summer interns supporting children's ministry here at Easter. Encourage Pastor Jen Nagel, who was yesterday elected as bishop of the Minneapolis Area Synod. Bless her leadership and transition to this new role. Lord, in your mercy. Bless our partners at Easter and beyond. Renew their energies for their important frontline front work of feeding the hungry, for children in need of extra support, for the elderly. Bless local city leaders, first responders, and those serving in our armed services. Lord, in your mercy. Carry our prayers as we carry on your work here. In the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated as we prepare to come forward for communion. Just a reminder, we commune by intinction, so as you come forward down the center aisle, 
You'll receive a bread wafer, which you'll hold for a moment until the word is spoken over the cup. And then you can dip that wafer into the light-colored grape juice or the dark-colored wine. There are gluten-free wafers available at the, uh, near the center uh, doors of the, of the worship space here today. And just a reminder that at Christ's own invitation, all are welcome to the table. Please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. 
We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. seated if you are a vision board or finance board member a new um, member of vision or finance board I actually would like to invite you to come stand down front here so everyone can see you good to see you guys thanks for coming up yes we will continue with installation of our new uh, leaders and we begin with a reminder and future leaders. <laughs> we begin with this reminder. Jesus, who came among us as a servant, calls us to faith and a life of loving service to our neighbor. You have been called to service on the finance board and vision board of Easter Lutheran Church, a gift from God to inspire us to love and good works. Will you assume this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, please say, I will and I ask God to help me. Will you carry out this ministry guided by the Spirit, faithful to the gospel, and trusting in God? If so, please say, I will, and I ask God to help me. And will you stay faithful in prayer, seek to grow in love, work for excellence in your skills, and stay centered in our mission to grow in faith and carry on the work of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I will, and I ask God to help me. People of God, I invite you to raise two hands in blessing towards these elected leaders as we together pray. Gracious God, 
You have called workers to many roles and positions in the world and your church. So you have also called these servants to your ministry. Grant them joy and trust that their work may continue to serve your mission in this church through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all the people said, Amen. And let us further celebrate these faithful leaders and the work that they will do together with a round of applause. Thanks, guys. I guess I can do announcements right here. It is that time in the service where we hear about all the amazing, exciting events planned for you in mind, um, opportunities for service, fellowship, learning. Um, and as always, we can't name all of the things that are happening. This is not an exhaustive list. So we do encourage you to sign up for the leaflet. It's a weekly e-newsletter that will be emailed to you every Saturday. And that will have even more up-to-date activities planned for you and ways to sign up, ways to get involved and, and be a leader and an active participant in our shared mission and ministry together. Um, you can go to our website to sign up for the leaflet. Um, and also, here at worship, we have connection cards available every week. They're, if, if they're not on your chairs or attached to a bulletin, they're out in at the table just outside the doors here. And uh, just ask anyone who's uh, ushering or any of the pastors, and we can get those to you. These connection cards are so that you can communicate with your staff, um, prayer concerns, change of address, phone numbers. There's a, a picture of them up on the screen. Um, we greatly appreciate your communication, and it just keeps the communication open uh, both in both directions, again, to help encourage you to be involved in our shared ministry together, and so we can care for you as, you, as needed and uh, however you call for. So um, then next is a statement of intent. You've been hearing about this for several weeks now. Uh, we're still looking for statements of intent. If you haven't done one, we really want to hear from everyone, uh, regardless of what uh, plans you may have, um, just so that everyone is involved in this important work that we're doing together as we look at uh, becoming one Easter, one mission. So over 300 families have already turned in their commitments, uh, their statements of intent. Let's further honor their courage and all of us stay generous uh, today, after worship, you can grab a blank statement of intent, and we're handing them out. They're always available in the welcome centers. If, um, if you forget or if you uh, don't like paper for some reason, you can do this on our website as well. And it's very easy to do, and we greatly appreciate everyone working together on that. And many of you have already started to um, turn in uh, your checks even, and we thank you greatly for your support of our mission and ministry. Um, remember to please indicate either on the check or on your envelope which portion you want to go to the capital appeal and what goes to your yearly ministry work. Thank you so much. This week is uh, fair for all, and so uh, it'll be 3.30 to 5.30 here at the Lake Campus. If you're looking for a way to save on groceries, Fair for All is a nonprofit discount grocery program. It sells frozen meat and fresh produce. It's very popular. It's open to everyone. No questions asked. Save 30 to 40% off retail prices. Credit, debit, EBT, or cash are accepted. And when we all join in, we help our neighbors get access to healthy food with dignity. The more people who buy, the cheaper the cost. And it's fun. It's a great way to be part of our community. Next, I uh, just want to speak a word about our graduating high, school, high schoolers. We want to celebrate you. Today is the baccalaureate service for you and your family. You can please RSVP so we have enough treats. But also, the following Sunday, we are going to, uh, we'd like to have all of your photos. And those are going to be shared on May 12th. You can use the QR codes on the screen. For more info or links, or go to easter.org slash youth. And congratulations, a little early. Also, if you're looking to college and you're looking for scholarships, uh, we have every year Easter Foundation awards three different scholarships. If you're interested, you can find applications and more information at easter.org slash scholarships. 
Turn them into the office by May 15th. So time is counting down there. Next Sunday also is an exciting event at the Easter at the Hill. Um, will be a special service by the Easter Choir, the Jubilate Ringers, the Choristers, and a String Quartet. The service will celebrate under the title, All the Days of My Life. And so we just want to encourage everyone to be aware of that and join us if you can, if you're interested, at 9.45 during the regular worship service at the Hill. And Spring Fling is the last exciting announcement I will leave with you today. This is a fun fellowship and food event for the entire congregation and neighborhood and community. Everyone is welcome, and we want to encourage you to invite many people to join us. Come to the lake site on May 23rd from 4.30 to 7.30 to enjoy a variety of activities for all ages, including our partners and others in the community. Again, all are welcome. Please spread the word. Invite your family, friends, and neighbors. It's a great, fun spring celebration opportunity and a ministry celebration. In the meantime, we're, as we count down to the 23rd, we're also asking for your help. There's a fun part of the event that involves um, gift baskets. And so we need a wide range of themed baskets that will appeal to different ages and stages, interests and abilities, from children and families to teens and adults and seniors. Bring completed baskets to Easter by the lake on Wednesday the 15th or Thursday the 16th. Or you could even bring them to the office uh, beginning anytime. More details are available on the events page of the website, and you can always ask our friend Rhonda. She's right here, so if you have a pressing question, look for her after our service. But I will conclude our announcements right there so we can uh, conclude our service and and sing together one more time. Um, I invite you to please stand for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I have a hope, I have a future. I'm a child of the mountain mover.